Well, as we reported at the top of this newscast, President Biden announced the government is lifting the COVID-19 national and public health emergencies this spring. So let's bring in UW Health's Chief Quality Control Officer, Dr. Jeff Pothoff. Good to Welcome. see you again. Hi. So what does this announcement mean and what are the consequences? Yeah, so there's a lot of things packed into kind of going away from the emergency health order, but I think the main thing for most people uh, is that things that we've taken for granted that are free associated with COVID-19, which is testing, vaccinations, even medications like monoclonal antibodies, Paxlovid, uh, they may not be as free in the future as this kind of trans over from government subsidies to the private sector. So you should stock up on tests now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. But I think, you know, as we prepare for this, we've got time. You're going to figure out, you know, based on your insurance carrier, uh, are they still going to cover free at-home tests or or not? Uh, if you need to get tested for COVID-19, do you have to be in their network or can you go anywhere like we've been used to? Uh, I think largely vaccination will be covered. There's other kind of laws and regulations that make it harder for uh, vaccines to not be free. Uh, but then certainly things like medications and stuff like that will probably have a cost associated with them, whether you're on Medicare or have a private insurer. Are you comfortable with shifting to endemic? You know, I think if you look at certainly what we're doing here, maybe the United States, endemic seems to be a word that would apply. Uh, so I can see where the U.S. is kind of making that transition to how do we live with COVID long term, addressing it with our normal health care policies. Uh, if I was World Health Organization, I'd probably be a little bit more concerned because there's places in the world where vaccination rates aren't real high and there's outbreaks in China yet. So if we look at the U.S., yes, worldwide, still probably a little bit of work to do. How are we doing locally here? Locally, I think we're doing all right, both from COVID, but also from influenza, RSV. Uh, we're seeing those levels came down pretty quick off those peaks, and they're staying at that lower level, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. Endemic means that's just something that we live with. Yeah, endemic means that we're never going to get rid of it. So, like, instead of thinking about how we respond to surges and things like that, how do we respond to COVID always being part of our vernacular, people always having COVID, how do we stay prepared for that? Like the flu, cold. Yeah, and the cold. A lot of things we're used to, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right, we're going to try something a little different mm -hmm. with Dr. Potoff today. We are going to let you ask the questions, and they don't necessarily have to be COVID-related. So if you have a question for Dr. Potoff, all you got to do is call in right now. That phone number is 608-270-9933. We will get to your calls right after this break. We are taking <laughs> your medical questions for UW Health's Dr. Jeff Potoff. The number is 608 270 9933. So call in now. We got some lines open. And there's other things going on besides COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I feel like a long hauler of colds or whatever. Yeah. So, and everybody's like been a lot of people like, you're still sick? You're still yeah. not feeling well? What is going on? Yeah, there's a few scenarios. So sometimes when we catch a virus or something like that, um, we have these averages. So once you get sick, you know, seven to 10 days, you should mm -hmm. be better. And some people just take longer than that. But another common phenomenon is once you get sick with one virus, uh, you're a bit more susceptible to catch a second one. Uh, so you have this first virus, you feel like you're getting better. You get this other second mild virus. And now those symptoms just kind of persist. And it's not necessarily that original infection that's dragging it on. It's you basically fighting two at a time. This is pretty common and especially in kids, uh, when they go to daycares and things like that, it seems like they're sick the entire winter. Right. It's not just one virus. They're actually kind of having multiple infections in a row. All right. Okay. The phones are uh, lighting up here. We'll start with Ron in Monona. Ron, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Potop. Uh, I'm in my early 80s, uh, 2021. Uh, I went there for a physical exam. Uh, they did a blood test. They found something on my bones and sent me for a CT scan. Then they did another blood test there, which included PSA. Uh, in my, my physical exam, they did a digital um, exam and found an, an enlarged prostate. Um, my question was, why would they not have done a PSA test at that time uh, when I found out... Uh, Five months later, I had metastatic prostate cancer. Yeah, that can be a tricky question without knowing the entire history. Uh, there's some debate on like when we get PSAs and how they're useful. 
I think, you know, with prostate cancer, one of the things they also look at is age at diagnosis and whether a treatment is actually going to make a significant difference uh, compared to how fast that cancer uh, is going on. So that's one thing to certainly talk with your urologist, your oncologist on, uh, on kind of where within that do you fall. In the 80s, though, they tend not to treat it at that point, right? The older you get, uh, the more likely it is that something that isn't prostate cancer uh, will be what causes your death rather than prostate cancer. Most prostate cancers are typically pretty slow growing. Okay, let's go to Rhonda, Rhonda in Beloit. Hi, Rhonda, go ahead. Hi. I'd like to know why it is that every time I get a flu shot, I end up sick for like six months straight. Yeah, that's a great question. I hear a lot of people say this. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, I got the flu shot and now I got the flu, uh, almost attributing influenza flu to the shot. I think there's a couple things that could be going on with Rhonda. So one, uh, the influenza vaccine uh, is really good at reducing the severity of influenza, but there are a fair number of people, even after getting the influenza shot, uh, who will go on to get the flu, but typically less severe. And then some people just have really robust reactions to those vaccines. I think some of us experience that with COVID-19, where we're kind of, you know, usually not six months, but for a number of days, really feeling kind of under the weather. Uh, some people have that go on for even longer than a few days. And you don't have COVID after the vaccine, you just have the symptoms. Right, so you don't get flu from the flu shot. Mm -hmm. That's not possible, but uh, you certainly can still get flu uh, if you get a flu shot. Some people don't, but some people will. Okay, we are waiting for line, here we go. Alexandria, go ahead, you're from Madison. Yes, I am. Hello, doctor. Yes. Um. I have had five COVID injections, well, injections, Pfizer injections for COVID, and I heard uh, in the, within the last couple of weeks that I could be, if you're over 65, maybe subject to a stroke. Yeah, this is a great question. So there was a recent report sent out by uh, Pfizer uh, or the, um, the, the agency that looks at adverse reactions to vaccines. And what they found uh, is that there may be, they don't know for sure, a small association between those who are over the age of 65 who get the Pfizer bivalent booster. Uh, and they saw what might have been a slightly increased rate of stroke within the first two to three weeks after getting that shot. So that would be the time period of stroke that happens within two to three weeks of getting that vaccine. Now on the flip side, they've looked at this in other countries, other systems, and they're not seeing the same association. So I think we need to learn more to say that there's for sure this association, uh, but that would be um, what, you're, what you're thinking of is this maybe small increase of having strokes two to three weeks if you're age over 65 and got a Pfizer booster. All right, and we have a final question from Barb in Portage. Hi Barb, what's your question? Yeah, I've got a question. It's about my medicine. I've been on it for a long time, and somehow my insurance made it so that all my medicine gets shipped to me instead of it going down to my pharmacy. I just was wondering, can they do that? And how would I do it? Because I need medicine. Yeah, you know, that's a good question, and each insurer can handle how they want patients to get medicines differently. It's possible that the uh, ability to ship you medication is actually a, a bit cheaper uh, all around for that to happen, and that might be why uh, they're pushing you in that direction. But certainly, if that's inconvenient or difficult for you, I would uh, suggest you reach out to your insurance company and say, hey, uh, you know, this is really difficult for me. Is there a way that I can do something different other than just get these shipped to my home? Or maybe talk to the nurse that could help. Mm -hmm. the She's a little elderly, might be. Yeah, or even calling your primary care clinic who's prescribing this, saying, hey, can you help me out, be a liaison between me and mm -hmm. the insurance company. Yeah. You don't have insurance answers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Thank you for taking calls, Jeff. Yeah, that was great. We'll, we'll do it again soon, and we'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.